The way that draft order is determined is a statistical method that directly affects the way that the game is played. Yet we have been led to believe that the best way to determine draft order is by using the reverse standings. The NHL, NBA, Major League Baseball, and NFL all use a way to determine draft order that gives favoritism to the teams that perform worst during the regular season. This creates an inherent incentive for teams to intentionally handicap themselves in an effort to acquire a higher draft pick. Fans shouldn't have to consider that a loss can be more helpful than a win. But before I continue, please let me pause to thank the Evolution of Sports team and the MIT Sloan Sports Analytics Conference for giving me an opportunity to present in 2012. My name is Adam Gold, and I believe that maintaining fan interest in their favorite teams and holding franchises accountable for a justifiable level of success is more important than the attempt to list teams from worst to first. In a way, the season ends when a team can no longer win a championship, yet fans are still asked to pay a premium to go and see their favorite teams perform. Fans are asked to pay the full dollar for a lottery ticket that has no chance of winning the jackpot. In an attempt to inspire fans to maintain passion, interest, and optimism in their favorite teams, while still giving the worst teams that need the most help the best chance to get the best picks to get the best players, I respectfully propose that draft order should be determined based on how teams perform after becoming mathematically eliminated from playoff contention. This is the 2010 NHL Draft. The Edmonton Oilers were the first team to pick among the 14 non-playoff teams after winning the NHL Draft Lottery. Using advanced mathematical combinatorics and rigorous computer algorithms, I determined the exact date when a team becomes mathematically eliminated from playoff contention. I have a program that will determine if there is a combination of wins or losses that would allow a specified team to make the playoffs. If no such combination of games is found, I determine and conclude that that team is mathematically eliminated from playoff contention. I then look at the performance after elimination. The Edmonton Oilers acquire 13 points in 14 games, 2 points for each of their 6 wins, 0 points for their 7 losses in regulation, and only 1 point for their only overtime shootout loss. I then sort these teams based on the performance after elimination. The Edmonton Oilers would have retained the first overall draft pick and could have still selected Taylor Hall. Notice that there is a good cluster of teams that range from 3 to 7 points. There would have been a tremendous amount of competition between these teams in an effort to acquire a higher draft pick. Reviewing historical data doesn't always suggest that the worst team will get the best pick. In this case, the winning percentage before elimination among these 14 teams was 45%. After elimination, the winning percentage among these teams is only 27%. Winning percentage dropped by almost half. The St. Louis Blues would have outperformed the system and could have selected Ryan Nugent Hopkins. The Edmonton Oilers were a puck bounce away from having the opportunity to earn the first overall draft pick. How do you think performance among teams after elimination looks? Do you think that teams that just missed the playoffs would have the advantage? What about teams in the middle? After plotting the seven seasons since the lockout, I conclude that the teams that perform worst and finished with the worst records in the regular season have the best chance at getting the best picks from the mathematical elimination draft order method. The x-axis shows the reverse standings where the one identifies the team that finished with the worst record and the y-axis represents the mathematical elimination draft orders. Notice that there is a nice linear trend that suggests that the worst teams do get the best picks with the mathematical elimination draft order method. After presenting at the MIT Sloan Conference, 14 teams in the NHL eventually became eliminated and started competing for the draft picks. This is the last day of the NHL regular season. Every team is playing. The Columbus Blue Jackets have the opportunity to clinch the first overall draft pick. The Oilers can catch the Blue Jackets if they lose against the Islanders and if Edmonton can stop Vancouver from winning the President's Trophy for the best record in the regular season. On the final day of the regular season, eight of these 14 teams played each other. Columbus plays the Islanders, Toronto plays Montreal, Anaheim plays Calgary, and Tampa Bay plays Winnipeg. These games will have tremendous impact on the final draft order. Columbus beats the Islanders to clinch the first overall draft pick. The Montreal Canadiens beat the Toronto Maple Leafs and could have jumped into a top five draft pick. 
Calgary beats Anaheim, and that would swap picks with the Ducks. Tampa Bay beats Winnipeg and moves into the top 10. Do you know what else uses a subset of games to rank teams? The way that a championship is awarded. If a championship can be awarded based on the result of a subset of games that have injuries, variability, and inequities in scheduling, then draft order can be determined with comparable dynamic mechanics. If Kobe Bryant gets hurt in the playoffs, they don't stop the games and wait for him to heal to start up again. The team that finishes with the best record in the regular season can be eliminated after four games. The worst team should have the capacity to win four games or so to get a top five pick within 15 to 20 games. The strength of schedule among eliminated teams becomes a factor, but there's a bigger problem. Teams are getting into the playoffs and getting higher playoff seeds because they are competing against teams that aren't playing to the level that they are capable of performing. We need to fix the playoff system first. To keep fans interested in their favorite teams and make sure that the value of win is greater than the value of loss even before elimination, there are supplementary rule changes that can be used. You can change the way that you use a tiebreaker. The tiebreaker can be whoever has the better record. The tiebreaker can be whoever has the worst record. You can give preference based on the team with the tougher strength of schedule after elimination can be given the tiebreaker preference. To keep teams trying to win even before elimination, you can also add whatever streak a team is on just before they become eliminated. So if a team wins two games and gets knocked out of the playoff contention, those two games can be applied to post-elimination performance. Typically, a team becomes eliminated when they lose. You can have a loss forgiveness for just one single loss without compromising the integrity of the post-elimination draft order. Additionally, you can change the trade deadline. Rather than having one fixed time where no team can trade after that period, you can have it so that once you're eliminated, you cannot trade, nor can you have waiver priority. Once you're eliminated and you compete for the draft picks, you can no longer improve your team. Rather than having one day with national media attention where fans will be checking in throughout the day to see if there are trades, we can make that process several weeks long. Leagues can implement a system very similar to the NBA draft where only the three teams that perform best after elimination get the top draft pick. The teams that are performing worst would have more games to earn those top draft picks, and the team that's worst would be guaranteed at least pick number four. The proposal to have draft order based on performance after mathematical elimination can be custom tailored to the needs and parity among all sports leagues. The minimum salary cap in the NHL, for example, is $48.3 million. Fans are asked to pay that, plus whatever costs to keep the doors open, so maybe $70 million minimum for every team. We should be able to hold teams accountable and say that teams should have the capacity to win any given game. We can set a standard for what a minimum level of success should be in professional sports leagues. We finally have a way to determine draft order based on a function of winning. It holds teams accountable for a justifiable level of success. And each of these methods uses the proposal of determining draft order based on performance after elimination. Keeping fans interested in their favorite teams and maintaining the integrity of the game is more helpful for these teams than just giving away the top draft picks. The worst teams would have the added benefit of having the ability to develop players in very intense atmospheres that playoff teams have the advantage of doing now. Let's move on to more examples from other sports. Let's start with the NBA. This is the 2011 NBA Draft. It's just a point in time that I consider where I look at the teams and their performance before elimination. I sort them based on the number of games that they have left after elimination. Here are the expected wins. I'm just looking at their winning percentage before elimination times the number of games that they have left. You can see that the expected elimination draft order would be highly correlated with the expected reverse standing. The Sacramento Kings and the Minnesota Timberwolves have very comparable records. 
Why not just say, ready, set, go? Let's race for the draft picks. The Sacramento Kings performed very well. They win nine games in 20. The Minnesota Timberwolves, they had Kevin Love get hurt, and then they sat him for several games to end the season, and they only won two games in 19. After sorting the teams based on performance after elimination, the Sacramento Kings would be rewarded with the first overall draft pick. These seven seasons since conference realignment suggest that the teams that perform worst during the regular season would have the best opportunity to earn the best draft picks. I predict that once you remove the incentives to lose in favor of the incentives to win, that you start seeing less variability among these teams in their pursuit of a higher draft pick. The regression for Major League Baseball suggests the very same result. The teams that finish with the worst record would have the best chance of getting the best picks from the mathematical elimination draft orders. The night before I presented, Major League Baseball changed their structure for the playoff system and added an extra wild card in both the American and National Leagues. The NFL does not have this same linear trend with the slope of about one. There's just a horizontal line. However, I would recommend that the NFL would consider only awarding the first overall draft pick for the teams based on performance after elimination. One of the big storylines for the NFL going into Week 17 featured the game between the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Indianapolis Colts, if they lost, could keep the first overall draft pick. So fans were saying, throw the game and lose. Keep the game close, but don't win. Make it seem like we could have won, but don't win so we can suck for luck. Here's how performance after elimination looks. The Indianapolis Colts would have retained the first overall draft pick, and the game between Indianapolis and Jacksonville would have been the decisive game in determining who picked first overall. The Indianapolis Colts, if they win, keep the first overall draft pick. If they lose, they can still get the first overall draft pick, but they need help. And there would have been a possibility that that game between Indianapolis and Jacksonville would have been played for the first overall draft pick. That ticket could have been just as hot as the Super Bowl ticket in Indianapolis. Would you rather sit in a good seat where the loser moves up in draft order, or would you rather sit further back where the winner can move up in draft order? There are no more easy games for teams trying to clinch a playoff spot or move up in seating or clinch home ice advantage, home field advantage. You are playing against teams that are trying to improve for the future at your expense. Players are competing for a future teammate. The cold war between rivalries within conferences and divisions is over. You don't need to have two teams that are very good to be updating that rivalry over time. You can have games that are played where a team that's trying to move into the top five is playing against the team that's trying to clinch home ice advantage or home field advantage. Fan interest in their favorite teams will extend to beyond just what their team is doing, but what all of the other teams are doing on every single night. Fans will look at the games that are being played and see how those games can impact their favorite team and their draft position. We need a small army of analysts to cover all of the potential storylines that can unfold as teams become eliminated and compete for draft position. However, all of these storylines will have one major theme, win. Win at any cost. Do whatever it takes to win every single game. Please let me state how proud I am to submit enriching research that has the potential to initiate an era where teams make their pursuit of winning unlimited fans within communities, fans among cities, fans across sports, can unite together for one common purpose. We should never have to consider that a loss can be more helpful than a win. It is possible to elicit intense competition between teams every game of the season while still giving the worst teams the best chance at the best picks at the best players. Franchises that endure poor seasonal performance should not accept considerable rejection and departure from supporters. Although the teams with the most losses receive the highest draft picks, the promise of future success by losing in the present creates a false sense of security. The current method yields the distressing paradox where success and failure become synonymous. It is possible to give teams that need the most help the best picks based on a function of winning. Sports leagues should consider my formula to create competitive draft orders and inspire fans with passion and optimism. If you have any questions or comments, I invite you to contact me by email, win 
at winningunlimited.com.